Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to present this paper published in BioArchive. I also heard they are, will be published in Nature Cell Biology soon. Yeah. So this paper is written by Pererosha Kushaks. And the title is Mechanical Sensitive of Nucleocytoplasmic Transport. So for understanding this paper, I'm going to share two YouTube about the nuclear transportation. One is about this. Hello friends, in this lecture we will be discussing about nuclear transport. As we know, it's a mechanism that involves transportation of molecules between cytosol and nucleus of the cell. In this process, we see both entry as well as exit of molecules takes place between cytosol and nucleus of the cell. Another thing we see here is that it's mediated via NPCs, that's nuclear pore complexes. These are the protein complexes through which micromolecule transport occurs. Approximately molecules above 5000 daltons of molecular weight pass through these complex and below 5000 daltons can pass easily through this membrane without use. So as you can see below 5k dalton they are easily transported without this nuclear pore complex or even without energy but above 5k dalton five complex most of the protein we are thinking they need energy to pass this nuclear pore complex using the energy or anything so they can pass passively another important point to be noted here is that it's by these karyophyrin transport proteins which mediates this process karyophyrin proteins are of two types first is importance and second are exportins importance as the name suggests that means they are able to import protein or any micromolecule which acts as a cargo into the nucleus and exportin are the proteins that are able to transport a protein or any molecule from nucleus into the cytosol. Simply this importing and exporting is you can think as a delivery guy. Delivery guy is importing one protein but they can deliver some cargo. Cargo means your product or protein. So their main, main, main role is import some cargo to nucleus, exporting export some cargo to outside the cytoplasm, outside the nucleus, cytoplasm. So when you think about our transcription factor, also they have to bind this importing. Okay, they are not free protein. They always need this importing to translocate in the, inside the nucleus. And importance bind to NLC, that's nuclear localization signal and it's an amino acid sequence. And in most of the case, it's positively charged lysines and arginines. So for and then importing, they have to recognize some tag, which protein should be inside the nucleus. The tagging is called nuclear localization signal, NLS, sometimes NLC, okay, maybe NLS. So NLS, how they are formed, they have a lot of positive charge, amino acids like leucine and what, what did they say? Leucine and uh, arginine. Leucine and arginine. Yeah, they are very high, high, highly positive charge amino acid. So when they recognize the highly positive charge amino acid sequence in the protein, this is they like, the important they can recognize the NLC. NLC takes for specific proteins which are to be transported. While as in case of exporting, these binds to NES, that's nuclear export signal, which is amino acid sequence also, but these are the hydrophobic ones like leucines. And so NES, also another tagging amino acid sequence, which is located in the protein as a cargo. So they are very hydrophobic structure. And then they have a lot of hydrophobic amino acid like leucine. Finally, the energy for this process is provided by rain gradient. That's ras nuclear protein. This is the protein which is present within the cell 
and that's able to provide energy for this process. Anyhow, the LAN, LAN is they provide some energy to the import and exporting. Yeah, of course, as I said, over 5 kiloton, import and exporting, they need some energy to do some play. So for that, run is important. So sometimes when you visit some other manuscript, they are using uh, uh, what's run deficient protein, run deficient cell to prove the nuclear pore, nuclear tension. Now let's see in detail how this process occurs within the cell. We see here the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope which has got nuclear pore complexes like these we can see in this figure through which this transport occurs. We see here in the cytosol we have the protein molecule that acts as a cargo and this cargo is to be transported into the nucleus and for this transportation we have caryophyllene molecules or caryophyllene proteins and in this case we have the importin and this importin will carry the molecule from cytosol into the nucleus. Importin has got two domains alpha and beta domain. Alpha domain binds to NLS that's nuclear localization signal and this NLS will carry the cargo or the protein into the nucleus. This NLS tags for a specific protein it must be noted here and this complex has RAN GDP attached to it which provides energy for this transport. And we have So even though he write down NLS is located below the importin but originally this protein also should have NLS. Okay, and then they can attach to the importin. And then this also importin have another NLS. They can near go to the MPC structure. We have the complete complex form here and it gets into the nucleus with the help of this RAN GDP. The importin complex after getting into the nucleus releases of the protein, there is the cargo into the nucleus. And the empty part, that is the importin and NLS signal is interacted with RAN GEF that's Goni nucleotide exchange factor where which the GTP is exchanged for GDP and we get the important complex in the form of GTP that means this GDP is exchanged for GTP by this RAN GEF after this we have the MPT import NLS complex is driven outside of the nucleus with the help of GTP which has got attached to it in the previous step and here in the cytosol there ran GAP that's GTPase activating protein hydrolyzes GTP to GDP again and releases one phosphate and we get the GDP form of important complex so we see here we are back to the same complex from where this cycle had started and the cycle for export is same but in the reverse direction and with the nuclear export signal so this is total pit picture of the importing so when you have some your protein let's say yap and then yap cargo they should bind to importing and then yap also has NLS and then importing structure also they have NLS and then they can combine with this GDP they can go inside and then release the yap and then from this GTP uh, provided by run GEF, they can go back and then run GAF, they hydrolyze GTP and 2GTP. So sometimes you can see the uh, cash domain LAN structure, which means uh, negatively remove this LAN. When you remove this LAN, run GAP, run GP doesn't work, and then we can prove this importing circulation is important for mediating some transcultural factor, nuclear cytoplasm regulation. So this paper, they also use this platform. So anyhow, you can think about the role of the protein and importing. So when you think some transcultural factor, which are localized in nucleus, you always think about what is the role of the importing and what is the role of the protein. So this coming paper, they mention about how they decouple these two complex. And the other one, thing is about the export here they only focus on imp importing and then this video is focused on exporting the nuclear pore complex controls the entry and exit of large molecules to and from the nucleus 
Transport of proteins in either direction requires several steps. Exportin is a protein located inside the cell nucleus that mediates transport of material from the nucleus to the cytosol. Exportin attaches to RAN GTP, increasing exportin's affinity for the nuclear export signal. The nuclear export signal is a short amino acid sequence on the cargo protein that acts as a tag for exportin to bind. The protein complex of exportin, RAN GTP, and the cargo protein is now allowed through the nuclear pore complex. In the cytosol, GTPase hydrolyzes RAN GTP into RAN GDP, causing RAN GDP to detach from exportin. Exportin loses affinity and unbinds from the cargo protein. Exportin returns to the nucleus as the cargo protein remains in the cytosol. Protein export is complete. Yes, this is about exportin. So I try to find how import and exportin they can play at the same time in terms of nucleus protein. But actually, I cannot find proper explanation how they linking together. So if you have any view, just let me know. Then yeah, under this context, let's go back to our paper. So here, they, they first, okay, they are having this protein, which has mild NNS. So you can just think this is as a cargo protein, like transcription factor, not importing or exporting. This cargo protein, they have NNS, which has binding to the uh, importing, and then they can transport to the nucleus. But this NES, nuclear export si signaling, they only activate by photo laser. So here, when you can see the, depending on the stiffness, let's say 1.5 and 30 kilopascal, there this protein original nuclear localization is high in high stiffness red compared to blue but when the light is activated this NES exporting is enhanced so they can go down quickly but when you see this slope this red is more quickly go down compared to blue which means stiffness can accelerate exporting export ratio as well and then when they turn off this light they go back to normal state status. Also, when you go normal status, you can see import, nuclear import speed is more high in high stiffness, red, compared to blue, the soft. So when you look at this, only these two, this is originally high local localized. When the light going on, export is enhanced. So more fast, they are, so 30 kilopascal more fast go out. They turn off the light. They're coming back to very fast. But when they're using DN cache, DN cache is negative domain of the Nesprin one, which can lose the nuclear tension mediated by the stiffness. So you can just simply say this is, even though you culture the cell on different stiffness, there's no nuclear tension. So they want to know the nuclear tension that can enhance, uh, enhance the nuclear pore transportation or not. Here, as you can see, the DN cache, they don't have any significant change in terms of nuclear cytoplasm ratio. Turn on the right, similarly, their turn of their export is enhanced. When turning on, turning off the light, go back to in similar way. So bottom line, when you look at the nuclear entry speed, just minus DN cache, normal status, they are enhanced in high stiffness but DN cache with their nuclear tension, similar, okay? Also, nuclear export x-axis speed enhanced in high stiffness. Minus value means is just a direction of the protein, but DN cache with their nuclear tension, same. So we can say that oh, this uh, nuclear entry speed as well nuclear x speed is high in high stiffness, and then this uh, nuclear localization difference is depend, de depending on the stiffness and then nuclear tension. Okay, so this is their starting point, but this 
con this protein, they already have this NLS and NES. Let's keep in mind. And then next, okay, first, they root out the, this NLS NES. There is no nuclear localizing signal or export signal. And then what happened? For answering the question, they are using this protein derived by bacteria. So they don't have any law, but they can only change the molecular weight. And then with GPP, you can track the, this protein level. So, which means this is simply they are transported by the diffusion. Okay, diffusion means they don't have any this NLS or NES, so no facilitated transportation. But maybe this from this diffusion, so they didn't uh, mention about detail in this diffusion, the importing or exporting, they can have play lower or not. They didn't mention detail. So anyhow, let's see. So from 1.5, 30 kilopascal, when you look at low stiffness, a low molecular weight, not much of change of the nucleus transportation, but high molecular weight, you can see more high nuclear localization in high stiffness. Ah, uh, sorry. So they didn't say they don't have any change. So this is their finding. Depending on the molecular weight, they don't, they cannot find very big difference in terms of nuclear localization, depending on the stiffness. So, and then they decouple something. Okay, Pass, passive transportation is not important to regulate the stiffness dependent <coughs> nuclear localization. Mm. And then, but, but this is their final outcome, right? And they want to know this final outcome, but what happened during the dynamics? So they are using uh, fluorescence bleaching study. So when you bleach the cytoplasm, you can know how the nucleus can go out. And then when you bleach the nucleus, you can know how the, the protein can go inside the nucleus. Okay, so depending on which site, nucleus or cytoplasm you are bleaching, you can determine the import rate, export rate. So that's, you can see stiffness, high stiffness, and low molecular weight. Import, export, both of them are high in high stiffness. Okay, but over the increase of molecular weight, this tendency is decreasing. So we can say that um, stiffness dependent uh, import export change of passive transportation can happen in molecular weight. But high molecular weight, this tendency is removed. But because import rate, export rate, they are similarly enhanced in high stiffness. So there is no uh, high stiffness in low, mo low molecular weight. So no change of nuclear localization. Okay. So here, from this contents, using this passive transportable protein, we cannot explain why this happened. Okay. So next one is, okay, passive, passive transportation is no, doesn't matter. And then next answer is, what happened though? Facilitated transportation mediated by NES or NLS. So they go back they, to the next. And before answering the question, they first talking about importing. Importing is cargo. So maybe the cargo, they can enhance the transportation of the protein. Okay. So when you, when you go back to your YouTube, the importing and cargo should bind and go inside the nucleus. So first, they want to know the law of the importing B. Importing B, only this, car, only this uh, delivery guide, they are highly enhanced in high stiffness. Okay. Im import rate but as well as export rate. So that is why nuclear localization, uh, actually nuclear localization means near the, this uh, periphery area of nucleus, very similar between these two stiffness. So, and then we can say that importing B is, doesn't matter that much to enhance the uh, nuclear localization. And then they uh, artificially make this kind of NLS affinity change. So L means low affinity of NLS, which has less positive charge. And then medium high affinity. And then 
they are using this backbone, the trans uh, backbone of molecule from the bacteria, and then they are making this uh, facilitated transportation system. Okay, and then they check, let's say low NLS and the in the between um, size, importing high high thickness, but export even though high but little change. So because of that, nuclear colonization more enhanced in high stiffness. So they mentioned that this uh, NLS is very important for the determine, determining this protein nuclear, nuclear translocation. And this is their final outcome. It's more highly enhanced. And then to prove this is really happening from the uh, nuclear tension or some external, external, external force. So they are using AFM. Here, you can only just focus on this uh, low NLS, upper one, basal level. But when they touch the cell membrane, they are highly enhanced within a few seconds. And then they remove this touch within a few seconds, they go back. So reversibly, this nuclear colonization Transportation is changed using their platform. But um, when they use diffusive, this same kilodalton, which do, doesn't have any this NRS, they don't have any change of nuclear localization. Okay? So this is their images uh, before, during, little enhanced in the center area, mm. nuclear localization, but diffusive doesn't change that much. So they little by uh, try to understand how this uh, stiffness dependent transportation system can happen. And then they finally summarize like this. Actually, it's very complicated. They have low and high and force without force and import complex. So just uh, when you look at this one, okay, import ratio rate, export rate, they are high, both of them high in low molecular weight. But over the increase of molecular weight, this export rate, especially their change is gone. But import, they are similarly high. Because of that, uh, maybe you can think about when you have when you have some certain transcription factor or certain protein in your mind, when you know the molecular weight, and then how they have NLS, NES, and then you can understand how they can behave. So, and then they can make some model like this. So, okay, it's very, little bit difficult to understand. So let's understand from this one first. So first, they are using low NLS system, low NLS affinity, and then different molecular weight, two different stiffness. So here, you can plot like this. Mm, molecular weight change, but this low affinity, y-axis, import strength is low and then middle, like this, low and middle, but depending on molecular weight. Here, this NC ratio is stiffness dependent. Here, low, yes, very dramatic, yes, yes, and gone, okay? So this NC ratio is converted to the mechanosensitive factor. One is same, but when they go up, they are more mechanosensitive, okay? So when you look at this 41 kilodalton, they have very nucleocolization ratio change, okay? So when certain protein have uh, low NLS affinity to the import, and then this molecular weight, they can show very high stiffness dependent nuclear localization. Okay? But over the increase of molecular weight, they are gone. And low molecular weight, or they are gone. So they can, so here, and then next, when this protein have middle, more strong affinity to importing, let's say similar, 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 and then try to show something, but not much change. So in the medium, 
here they can medium but relatively high, strong affinity to importing. They have this tendency. Okay, molecular weight change doesn't change that much. Even the stiffness change. But and when you look at when you just confirm this 41 kilodalton, and then they, you can change this no NLS, only passive and facilitated low and medium affinity. Here, only low affinity that can show very high, but medium high doesn't change that much of the in terms of mechanosensitive manner. Okay, so from this uh, result, they can make this kind of graph. Okay, so they said this in between stage. Let's say when certain molecule have high molecular weight, but when they have less NLS system, they can have some mechanosensitive behavior. But in terms of low molecular weight, they should have very high NLS affinity. And then they can have mechanosensitive manner. Okay, and this graph they can convert it to the mechanosensitivity. You can just reverse it. And then they can using some model. So this K on is uh, low affinity to the importing and then high affinity depending on the stiffness. So just when you look at the blue and red, compared to blue, red, you can see the tendency. And then they when they have high affinity, they can go up. So mechanism does go up, and she ratio depending on the molecular weight and then energy system, you can depict like that. So, as a finally, okay, this a previous one, they are using artificial protein, right? But here, they are want to know, okay, this kind of tendency really happen to the real protein, which is already known to be a mechanosensitive. So first, they focus on twist. Twist also well, very well known, one of the mechanosensitive transcription factor. So control, the highly NC ratio is very high in high stiffness, but D and cache negative uh, remove the death print two to decouple the actin and nuclear membrane. They are losing the stiffness dependent NC ratio. And D and run, when they remove the importing, exporting some energy thing, they're also gone. And then they are using import inhibitor, import hydro. Also, they are gone. Okay, so this is their final outcome. So nuclear tension is very important from this DN cache, and then DN LAN import system is important, proved by the DN LAN, and then importation is very important using import inhibitor. So they can prove this concept. This is already similarly observed in our artificial protein, and then. They engineer this twist. So when you look at this twist uh, protein, they already have NLS, two NLS, and then G3PP2 binding motif, which is cytoplasmic binding protein. Okay, so endogenous and cytoplasm binding is original. Original has NC ratio, sensitivity very high, but when they remove the endogenous NLS, remove it. Uh, sorry, uh, they maintain this NLS, but mutate the cytoplasm binding here. And then also they are gone because when this protein doesn't have any power to maintain the cytoplasm, all nucleus is going to the nucleus, uh, this protein. So NC ratio, both of them high. So you cannot see any stiffness dependence manner. But when they remove the endogenous NLS, okay, both of them, and then what happened? Actually, they, they said little, little dramatic and little significant change here, but this mechanosensitive, they are relatively losing, okay? But when they using low, ultra low affinity, low affinity, medium, high affinity of NLS here, they are remove the endogenous, but they are adding the new NNS here, ultra low, low, medium, high, low, 
they can relatively have similar mechanical sensitivity to the original one. Right? So they can really prove that this NLS in here, this, this molecular weight 20 kilodalton twist, when they have low affinity of NLS, they can have mechanical sensitive behavior depending on the stiffness. So this is their uh, images. Okay. When they mutate this uh, cytoplasmic binding, all of them go inside nucleus, okay? And then they are little, they are very dramatic change, little change go down, but high in low, and like that. And then, okay, just briefly, this end of this paper, so and then when you go back to our figure, legend, I mean, cause of polymer figure, uh, here, they also mention about well, the DN cache, DN cache, when, when the cell losing their tension from the actin, uh, uh, derived from the stiffness substrate, they are losing or importing, exporting, change, change, or go down. Import, export. And when, when you use diffuse, diffusive, just uh, without NLS protein, or when they have low NLS, they go all, got, all, all going down. So which means any other transportation, import, export, they are highly dependent on the nuclear tension. This is true. And then this is their uh, modeling. I just skip it. And then also here they fabricate NES system. NES, they using the same platform, but without NLS, they are using you, they are adding NES sequence in the protein, high, medium, low. So a, when you see the NES, high means they are more export, right? And low means li little exportation power. So when you look at this mechanical sensitivity, uh, you can see NC ratio, uh, you can see the detection change in here, like especially medium, NES and maybe here, ah, here, sorry, high NES and then 41 kilodalton below the 0 0.5, 0 0.05 p value. Here only you can see mechanical sensitivity. Okay, but other, other dif di different affinity of the NES and kilodalton, they don't, they don't see any significant change of the mechanical sensitivity, which means uh, importing, they are highly dynamic, right? For export, when they change exporting sequence, not much of change, except this 40 kilodalton high NES. So that's why the protein, uh, steeply dependent protein transportation is highly depending on the uh, NES <coughs> system, not NES. And then they ask, why this happened? So maybe when you see the volume of the nuclear cytoplasm, Nucleus is relatively smaller than cytoplasm. So from the cell and energy point of view, when the change of the nucleus protein is more easy to change. When you change the export, you have to change the, change the protein, expression, protein amount of the cytoplasm. You have to change a lot. So, so because of some energy consumption point of view, change of the inside nucleus protein is more easy to change. So they mention like that. And then finally they confirm, okay, twist is actually not very familiar with us, but why they are using twist? Because uh, twist is more easy to change the NES or NLS system by their hand, but also they can confirm by the other mechanical sensitive trans transcription factors like snail and SMS3. So all snail, SMS3, high, in nuclear localization in high stiffness, and then they're all gone by cache, DN cache, DN1, importager here. And then in case of SMAS3, TJ beta is very well known for enhancing the nuclear localization. You can see this uh, mechanical sensitivity doesn't change that much, but the nuclear localization total enhancement totally enhanced. This is all enhanced, this is all enhanced. Maybe we can similarly observe in our kilowatt power blast. And then lapped. Lapatinib is Lapatinib. Uh, I forgot the uh, lower. 
that party ah this is well known uh induce smash 3 nuclear export so tj beta is induce smash 3 nuclear import and laptinib report to smash 3 nuclear export so when they treat the, this exportation enhancement drug, this mechanical sensitivity is really go down, going down. So they prove their concept. And then this is their uh, images for four math and from the snail going up and then change, going up, diminish, diminish, little enhance, diminish. And then also other mechanical sensitivity factor like GATA2 and NF-kappa B, also we can see similar pattern. Actually, they didn't look at here in this YAP because they already published in Cell two, three years ago. So they only focus on other macular sensitive transcription factors. Yeah, end of this paper. What up, Jonah? What up, Joe?